All right, fellas, I found an old recipe for some ceramic paint in the Los Alamos National Nuclear Laboratory uh, PDF from back in the 1970s. This stuff's pretty amazing. It uses water glass, a special type of water glass, and zirconium oxide. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this amazing paint, and I'm going to tell you why you would want to do so. It goes a little bit beyond just protected from oxidation. This stuff is amazing. It actually causes your furnace walls to get hotter. You see how it glows really bright? It has a very high emissivity, meaning it reflects almost all of the energy that hits it. All right, so just in case my lab books catch on fire, we're going to go through some of this. And a long time ago, a couple of months ago, my good friend Mescal requested some information from me, and I couldn't find it. Um, if you're watching this, brother, this right here is the recipe you were looking for. And I believe that's 60 grams of silica, 80 grams of sodium hydroxide, and 100 milliliters of water gave you a formula that solidifies at low temperature. I'm no longer using the sodium hydroxide. I really love it when I find these old documents. They're hard to come across, but um, the information in here, you know, cost hundreds of thousands of dollars probably in today's money if you were to you know go through this again so this is kind of what started the coatings and one of the things I'm trying to do with these coatings is cause a high emissivity coating all right guys now one way to illustrate why I would want to do this why do you want to increase the emissivity of your furnace walls pretend this is the walls of my furnace what we have right here fellas is a stainless steel cup this stainless steel cup is full of hot liquid that's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? This is a piece of electrical tape that was placed on that cup. Now, the cup is the same temperature when you touch it with your hand. However, it is not releasing the same amount of infrared radiation because the emissivity of this material here is far lower than this here. So imagine if we could make a paint that we could paint our furnace wall with that made the whole furnace wall shine this bright. I got news for you. If you do that, you're gonna make your furnace that much hotter. This right here is a coating mix that I found in one of these documents, not this one in specifically. Let's see if I can find, this is the other one here. What is this? This is the Atomic Energy Commission. I have a Crucible's handbook made by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and the wealth of information in here. Dude, they show you how to make crucibles that can withstand 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but they're a little toxic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so one of the reasons we're doing this is radiation is the dominant mode of heat transfer when the temperature is higher than 573 Kelvin, which isn't that hot at all. So we're gonna be making a super reflective paint kind of like the ITC 100 a lot of you guys know what this stuff is well one of the things that makes it work is the fact that it reflects more IR energy not just visible light infrared light and infrared heat energy off the refractory walls back at the work zircon has an extremely low thermal conductivity at 2 watts Per meter to Kelvin, whereas alumina is 30 watts per meter to Kelvin. Here it is. ZNO 41.25% and potassium silicate. And All right, fellas. So this is a very intelligent group of people. I'm pretty sure they're aware of sodium silicate. So the fact that they chose potassium silicate tells me that they've done the footwork we're just not even going to mess with the sodium silicate anymore if these guys are using potassium i am too adding yttrium to the zirconium oxide enhances the performance they were able to heat this stuff up to 2900 fahrenheit i do have some yttrium oxide this 500 gram baggie, and yes, this is how they sent it to me. 
This is 500 grams, and it cost me $130, 130 Trump dollars. So for Biden, you're looking at about 650, 650 bucks. And uh, most of this ITC 100 blends are around 56 to 58 percent zircon, so or zirconia, whatever. So this is supposed to be zirconium oxide. Okay, so this should be the stuff the dreams are made of here. That we trouble not them, which for among the Gentiles return to God. How much this? But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution to idols. Okay, we're going to boil this. I'm going to kind of keep track of the height of this fluid here. Pushing about 900 watts into that. And uh, we're just going to keep stirring it and adding water until it all dissolves. And that's going to make some refractory water glass. So I did add, I did add a little bit of water. You can see here we're starting to get this material to form. That is the water glass, but I want that to stay dissolved. So this is kind of what we end up with here. It's thick enough that you can actually see the density lines in it. The camera isn't picking it up because and what we did is we mixed it with the zirconium oxide until we got a nice paint. Just paint consistency. Keep adding it in until it turns into a white paint material. You'll see what I mean. It eventually finally takes the color of paint. It starts to just look yellow at first. The second it, it leaves that yellow tinge, you're good to go. And surface preparation is everything. And you're never to go over 0.75 millimeters on a single coat or else it will spall. It'll bust off of there. It's supposed to be sprayed on, okay? And I have some spray equipment. I'm going to get ready. But you can see here I painted a very thick coat on here just doing a test, and it did very well. It didn't spall off of there or nothing. But you can see just how brilliantly white it is, and the amount of IR heat this stuff reflects off is so much more. It's like up to 30 to 40% more energy coming off the walls and 30 to 40% less energy escaping the furnace. Happy to report that there is no visible spalling. Well, I take that back. They say don't go over three quarters of a millimeter, and you can see right there the thick spot has kind of got a little bit of cracks in it, but not on the thinner areas. So I think we're ready to choose our composition and uh, start spraying some of this stuff on with a spray gun because that's the best way to do it. We'll take a look at this stuff here in a little bit. Looking really good. We are still fully coated. Okay guys, I hope we can see this. Took some pretty heavy damage. But then again, that was direct flame impingement with about 90 kilowatts of power. Oh man, that's beautiful. I'm rubbing that really hard, about ripped my hands off. At this point, I would imagine we have vitrified the water glass. Well, it's a little dusty. 
This stuff here isn't though. This was coated extremely thick. And you can see where the thin coat fared better. And you're probably not getting a benefit wasting material making it any thicker, you know what I mean? I mean like five atoms thick and this stuff is opaque, you know? You do want to fill up all those voids. So based on what I'm seeing here, it's detrimental to make the coating very thick on stone also. This seems pretty good. I don't have a very good camera for macroscopic. I need to get my camera game together, guys. We're doing stuff that requires us to need to be able to see things. I'm getting old and blind as it is. But even with the wire brush, I mean, that's I'm trying to hold it here. I'm rubbing it really hard. And it is rubbing stainless steel off onto the material rather than rubbing the material off. So there might be some dirt from other things that I've rubbed with this, but th this is extremely reassuring. I think uh, we have ourselves a viable product on our hand here. I'll probably even start selling some of this stuff for people who don't want to bother making it. I mean, I've got quite a bit. So my next move is I'm gonna turn this whole jar into some paint for the paint sprayers, and we're gonna spray some things down properly. Some literature says three mils is the max, and the others say 0.75 millimeters. 